The Green Hornet. He hunts the biggest of all game, public enemies that even the G-men cannot reach. The Green Hornet. With his faithful valet, Cato, Britt Reed, daring young publisher, matches wits with the underworld, risking his life that criminals and racketeers within the law may feel its weight by the sting of the Green Hornet. Ride with Britt Reed as he races toward another thrilling adventure. The Green Hornet strikes again. Hurry, Cato, here's where we smash a smuggling racket. This is the customs office right here, Axford. Golly, it's a big place, Lori. What's all this courtyard for? Did they hold parades or something? <laughs> you lug, don't you know what a customs office is? <laughs> what are you trying to do? Make me off to be ignorant? Now, with you, that's not necessary. I can see the proof right before my eyes. Oh, I'd better detect it for nothing, Lori. Mm, the police department would give you an argument on that. The customs office is where... Uh... It's where, um, uh, well, golly, it's where the customs inspectors hang out. Surprise, you do know something. And if that ain't the answer, I... I... Holy crow, you mean I hit it right? <laughs> For you, it's a bullseye. The customs offices where people coming into the country make their declarations. Declarations of independence? No, you sap. Declarations of the stuff they're bringing into the country. Now, look, see that guy with a cap ahead of us? Yeah. Standing next to the truck? Is he a customs officer? Yep. Uh, the guy with him is giving him some kind of argument, huh? It looks that way. Superman snakes, Lodi. Look at that trunk. It's fell off the truck and got all smashed open. Say, maybe there is some news here. Huh? Jonathan gave me this as a routine assignment because things were dull. But who knows? Maybe that guy's important enough to give us a story for the Sentinel. Come on, let's go over there and listen in. This is outrageous. I shall notify my government. I'm the vice counsel for my country in this city. You have no right to inspect my luggage. It was a mistake, Mr. Sneed. You did it deliberately. Even a blind man could see the diplomatic seals on my baggage. So you brought in eight trunks. That's a lot even for a diplomat. I shall report this occurrence. There's no harm done. We'll send your stuff to your home. No harm? What is this trunk here? You deliberately let it smash open. Okay, I did. As a matter of fact, Mr. Sneed, I wanted to see what was in that trunk. This is an outrage. There's been plenty of smuggling going on. Look at the contents of this trunk. What of it? Nothing in it but lace handkerchiefs. Imported lace. What are you doing with a trunk full of imported lace handkerchiefs? You have no right to ask questions. Yeah, I know. Diplomatic immunity. Those handkerchiefs are for the consulate. I, uh, I may give some away as gifts. If you ask me, you're smuggling them in. For the last time, you have no right to question me. I will lodge a protest against this. It will be hey, no... Hey, this is pretty expensive lace, isn't it? How dare you? Carly, look at all the decorations on it. Give me that. Hey, take it easy. For the last time, I've had enough of this prying. Who are these two? Search me. We're reporters, mister. From the Daily Sentinel. Reporters, sir. There is no story here. Go back to your paper. Carly, what's he in here? This, this oath. Meaning me, Mr. Sneed? You and no other. I am leaving. I am going to the consulate, and I warn you. Unless these trunks are delivered at once, with none of the diplomatic seals tampered with, I shall see that you lose your job. Your government will pay damages for that broken trunk as well. Holy crow, he's mad enough to chew nails. Hey, what's all this talk about smuggling? Who is that guy? Named Sneed. He's a foreign diplomat. If you ask me, the guy's using his diplomatic job as a cover for smuggling. Huh? Well, what are you going to do? Me? I can't do a thing. You heard him yelling about his immunity. Holy crow, you mean he's bringing in stuff without paying no duty? Yeah, but just try and pin it on him. I'll be lucky if he doesn't get my badge for this. You guys might as well go peddle your papers. I'm in hot water and up already. <laughs> Call reporting, Lowry. I send you out to cover a custom house. And what happens? Gone again. I'm two bit diplomat gets riled when a trunk bus. And you're told to go peddle your papers and you go. Sure, I went, Gunnigan. Because I had something better. Mm, I see. You're too important for a little assignment like the customs house, eh? Wearing a balloon where your head ought to be, huh? Or 
Is your work on the Daily Sentinel beginning to bore you, Lowry? Oh, for Pete's sake, Gunnigan, give me a break. I tell you, I got something. Yeah. And maybe I can prove it right now. Maybe. You better. Casey. Hey, Casey. Have you two finished your word battle? Your final round, Casey. Did you tell the boss we wanted to see him? I don't see why Reed has to be it's my in him, Gunnigan. Well? He said he'd be right out. Oh, here he is now. Yes? What's this about? Okay, Lowry. Give, boss. I swiped a handkerchief this afternoon. I want you... Good grief, Lowry. Swipe. She? Now he's a kleptomaniac. Okay, then, borrowed. But Sneed doesn't know I have it. Sneed? At the customs house. He's some half-pint vice consul. When Axford and I got there, he was having a terrific argument with one of the customs officials. A diplomat shouldn't have to argue with the customs. That's what he said. There was a busted trunk, and I took this handkerchief from it. Gosh, that's a beauty. This guy Sneed had a dozen trunks. And the one I saw was jammed full of lace hankies. So, instead of a story, Lowry comes home with a lace hanky. It's one of the loveliest I've ever seen. Well, what Hey, Casey, you, you don't have to grab it out of my hand. Lowry, are you sure you're not pulling a gag? Huh? Are you sure this hanky didn't come from Creevy's? Creevy's? The department store? They've made a feature of imported lace handkerchiefs like this at a swell price. Miss Case, you're sure they're the same as this one? Mr. Reed, that's one thing a woman knows. Materials. And you got this at the customs house, Lowry? Out of Sneed's trunk, boss. What is this, a memory test? It's more than that, Gunnigan. Huh? Lowry said he had a story, and I believe he has. Right, Lowry? Check, boss. I have the same idea about this guy, Sneed, that the customs official had. Customs official? And he didn't mince any words, either. He told this guy off, even though it may mean his job. Gosh, Mr. Reed, I smell a mouse. Not a mouse, Casey. What you smell is a smuggling racket. What? Lowry, you're suggesting Sneed is smuggling these in? He had plenty, and Casey saw him in that store. Well, maybe you are a reporter. But, Mr. Reed, the department store may have gotten the hanky some other way. Some honest way. Why not? This guy hasn't got a corner on lace hankies. What about the price, Miss Case? Did Creevy's offer them at a low price? Yes, Mr. Reed. It was much cheaper than anywhere else. It's a natural, boss. Creevy's is a big firm. They sell plenty of these things. Who's going to trace them? Yeah, that's true, Lowry. It would be difficult. Sure, Lowry. You missed your calling. You're not a reporter. You're an amateur sleuth. What reporter isn't, Gunnigan? Gosh, Mr. Reed, if this is true, think of the thousands of people that are buying smuggled goods. And the thousands this guy Sneed is picking up. Reed. Can't you turn any place without running into a racket of some kind? I'm afraid not, Gunnigan. Every place you look, somebody is raking in the chips. I'm doing it by stacking the cards. Smuggling in lace. What can be done about it? Can't Sneed be arrested? Without proof, Casey? Even with proof, Miss Case. Remember, Sneed is a foreigner in this country under diplomatic immunity. All the police could do is make him leave the country. I see. The people who purchase these handkerchiefs will be out of luck. Why? For possessing smuggled goods, Casey. It'll be a mess all around, Miss Case. One thing gets me, boss... How does Sneed deliver this goods to the department store? Who's he working with? Gotta get Lowry dug this up. Can you keep him on it? You think there's a story? Perhaps. Okay. Where do I start? I got the police in on this. Give them the tip. Cover Sneed. Make a tip, boss. You find out who he's dealing with, there's something for the police. And plenty for the Daily Sentinel. Yeah, whatever you get, phone it in. I'll have a rewrite man handy. Sneed's going to have to move those goods fast, and the Sentinel wants to know how. That evening, Britt Reed returned to his apartment and gave certain instructions to Cato, his valet and the only living man to know him as the Green Hornet. You understand what I want, Cato? Yes, Mr. Britt. A chemical ink that'll be invisible for a certain period and then begin to show up. You can do that? It's easy, Mr. Britt. Laurie and Axford are with the police shadowing Sneed's home. Even if they have some idea about who's working with Sneed in this smuggling racket, they may be unable to get proof. And that puts it up to us. You go out tonight? Tonight, Cato. As the Green Hornet. Get down to the hiding place of the Black Beauty and start preparing the chemical. I'll join you as soon as I hear from Lowry. Hello? Boss? Yes, Lowry, what is it? I called Gunnigan. He said you left word to ring your apartment. Will the police have any news? Throwing a party, boss. Axford and Moran and I have been checking the guests. Come on, get to the point. Moran spotted one of the guests. Looks like our hunch was right. Don't tell me Sneed's trying to move that lace now. No, no, not yet, boss. But one of the guests was from the department store. Was it uh, Creevy himself? Not Creevy, boss. Creevy's daughter. Creevy's daughter? Oh, looks like you may have a story, Larry. If we get anything else, I'll give it to Gunnigan tomorrow. Yes, do that. Good night. Good night, boss. Creevy's daughter, eh? Yeah, if anyone can get good smuggle into the department store, she could. I think I'll go to that party myself. (laughs) 
Britt Reed went through a sliding panel in the rear of his clothes press. Then along a narrow passageway hidden within the wall of the apartment house, which led directly to the supposedly abandoned building where Cato's laboratory stood, next to the sleek, streamlined car of the Green Hornet. Are you almost through with the chemical, Cato? Yes, sir. Your report in this container, as soon as you add the reagent. I'm adding it now, Mr. Wait. Your knowledge of chemistry comes in handy, Cato. Here, I'll hold the funnel. Now cap this container and put it in your pocket. Do you have the hornet mask and the gun? In the car. Now I'll drive the black beauty, Cato. We can't get too close to Sneed's place with the police watching. I'll leave the black beauty a little distance off and trust to the darkness to get in. It's a danger, Mr. Bitt. Well, I recall after you left the apartment, Sneed is having a party at one of the guests as Miss Creevy. Creevy? When she and Sneed start discussing the smuggled lace, there's going to be another guest present, Cato. An uninvited guest called the Green Hornet. <laughs> Miss Creevy. Mr. Sneed. Oh, this is a lovely party. I'm so glad that you enjoy it. Would you care to dance? No, thanks. I'm rather tired. Can't we just, uh, talk? Surely, Miss Creevy. Here, through this door. Now we can talk privately. You brought in the lace? Eight large trunks crammed full. There was almost some difficulty. What? The blundering customs inspector. Let the trunks fall off the truck. Does anyone suspect? One of the trunks burst open. There was a snooping reporter present at the time. He saw the lace? Oh, it is nothing. He doesn't suspect. I sent him away hurriedly. But we must be extremely cautious how we transfer the lace to your department store. There's no trouble about that. This particular department happens to be my job at the store. You have the lace here? Below in the basement. When will you pick it up? Tomorrow night, midnight. I'll have the truck. As usual, eh? Yes, the back entrance. We must be extremely careful. We always. We've got away with it before. We can do it again. Fine, then. Tomorrow midnight. Now, perhaps it is best for us to return to the main room and mingle with it. What's that? Excitement from outside. Here, this way. To the French windows. Have you seen him, man? Who's this way? Hey, turn around now, expert. Who are they seeking? We're going across the lawn. Who are you? What do you want? Have you been seeing nobody around? What does this mean? I am having some people in. What is the disturbance? Sorry, Mr. Sneed. Moran, police headquarters. There's been a prowler around your place. A prowler? Golly, lady, ain't doubt Did you see that, Moran? He must have got away, Lowry. You. You are that reporter. Why are you here? Well, uh... Holy crow, I tell you why we're hanging around, Sneed. It's on the Never mind, expert. I said never mind. It's nothing, Mr. Sneed. We... We're just covering police news for the paper, that's all. You've been prying, snooping around. Steve. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yes, of course, of course. I, you must forgive me. I, I'm i a little disturbed. So so much excitement. Was it um, a robber? Uh, I guess so, lady. You've got a lot of jewels in that crowd. Thank you very much for frightening this prowler away, Sergeant. Uh, if he has gone. Sure he has. Super and Snash, we've seen him too fast for him to try nothing. Whoever the crook was... He ain't hanging around. Not with Michael Axford to nab him. Have you any idea who it was? All we've seen was the shadow, lady. Might have been any one of a hundred crooks. Sure, it's Holy mackerel. Listen to that. That, that strange buzzing. What is it? Tell us, Doris. Way down at the corner. It's a car. But it's going so fast. I never saw a car like this. Well, take a good look while you can. There's your prowler. But who? Who? Holy crow, who do you think? That's the car of the Green Hornet. <laughs> The Green Hornet at Sneed's party. Has Britt Reed's plan gotten underway? Before the next exciting scenes of our Green Hornet adventure, please permit us to pause briefly. Green Hornet fans, please stand by for an important announcement. Next Thursday night, November 30th, the Green Hornet is going to inaugurate a new feature on this program when he calls into session for the first time on the air, the Law and Order Roundtable. Your forum of discussion on vicious rackets, the clever men behind them who victimize you and your neighbors, and what he thinks you can do to remedy the situation. Be sure to be on hand when the gavel sounds next Thursday night on this program and calls to order the first meeting of the Law and Order Roundtable. It's a feature for you and for every high-minded citizen in this great country of ours. And the Green Hornet's counting on you to be present. Now 
now to continue our story. As the huge streamlined black beauty sped away from Sneed's home through dark alleys, Britt Reed spoke briefly to Cato. The time will be tomorrow night at midnight, Cato. I'll be ready, Mr. Britt. Fortunately, Axford didn't get a close look at me. He spotted me there at the window, but the mask in the darkness gave me a chance to warn you. Just in time, Mr. Britt. You got into the basement? Yes, sir. Were you able to mark the lace handkerchiefs with a chemical? I stumped in. You used that rubber stamp we found on Sneed's desk, is that right? Yes. Good. Even though we were interrupted, there was still time enough to mark plenty of the lace. You went through each trunk. That's right. And the stage is set, Cato. I'll be at the Daily Sentinel tomorrow during the day to keep checking what the police know. Tomorrow night, we'll see if we can trap these smugglers without trapping the Green Hornet. Hey, Casey. Oh, golly, Casey, where's I can read? Put the brakes on, Axford. You'll go through the wall. Casey... Did anyone ever tell you about what a great detective I am? You did, but I still don't believe it. You will when you hear what I dug up. The only thing you ever dug up was a garden. It's news, Casey. Ah, go ahead. Convince me. Super snakes, you don't take me serious. So help me, Hosanna. It's real news. News with a capital G. Capital G? <laughs> you big lug. News isn't spelled with a G. Who said so? Mr. Webster. That's his dictionary right there. Ah, never mind that. This here news does start with a G. G for what? G for green hornet. That's what. But uh, it's excited. Not anymore. But, Casey, didn't you hear me? The Green Harlot. Axford, what time is it now? Huh? It's four o'clock in the afternoon. Golly, what's that got to do with it? Anyone else would have been calmed down by now. What are you talking about? The same thing you are. I'm talking about the Green Harlot. That's just it. You've been talking about him ever since last night when you spotted his car at Sneed's place. Axford, don't you realize that's old stuff by now? Holy crow, Casey. I ain't talking about last I night. I can't figure out why you keep up. What? It ain't about last night. The hornet's popped up again? Sure he has. A telephone call to public headquarters. That, that's what I want to see Reed about. Well, that's different. Yes? Axford's here, Mr. Reed. Axford? With a mouthful of news about the green hornet. The hornet? Uh, uh, late development? He's champing at the bit with it. Does he go in? Yes, send him right in, Miss Case. Now. Okay, Axford, that's your signal. But not too fast. Mr. Reed has company. Company? Laurie and Gunnigan are in there. Ah, them two. Go you. up, Axford. Ah, what do you mean? If you're going through that door, open it first. It's easier. Ah, you and your guys. Hey, 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 Reed. What's this about the horn, Axford? It better be good. You're interrupting something. I came right over from headquarters. What's the scoop? Reed, the hornet's going to be over to Sneed's. Well, I thought that was last night, Axford. So much next. I just finished going through that once with Casey. He's going to be there again. Holy mackerel, boss. What's he after? Well, there's the smuggling business. Don't tell me the hornet's interested in that. Why not? Reed, you, you seem mighty sure of yourself. Do I? From what Larry said, they're smuggling with a team of two. Sneed and Miss Creevy. Now you're ringing in the hornet. Well, he, he was there last night, Gunnigan. Sure, we seen him. So it uh, seems logical to suppose he's concerned in some way with this rocket. Mm, yeah, that, that's true. Who took this phone call, Axman? Over at headquarters, Reed. Uh, Brian took it. But he couldn't find out who was giving the tip-off. Do we stand another watch, boss? You do, Larry. The Sentinel can use that good story. Help circulation. <laughs> Golly, Reed, well, why don't you come along? It's going to be a lot of excitement. Yes, perhaps I will, Axman. Perhaps I will. I, I'm telling you, I've been in training. If I get near that clean harness, I'll... You'll do me. nothing. You guys remember one thing. You're a newspaper man. Ah, good Your good. business is getting the news. Leave the Green Hornet to the police. You get the story into the Daily Sentinel. What are you doing here, Casey? Eight o'clock. You closed up your typewriter long ago. Well, didn't you know, Gunnigan? I wanted to go along with Axford and Lowry. Oh, I get it. You couldn't be right on the scene, so Oh, so you... I'm staying here at the Sentinel to learn the news when they phone you. Well, maybe a long wait, Casey. Oh, I don't mind. I have my knitting. Okay. <clears throat> we'll hold down the lobster shift together. Holy crow, Miranda. The clock hit nine already. Ain't we going out to nab the harlot? According to that phone call, we got three hours yet. You ought to provide softer benches for the working press. But this bench is hardwood. Uh, do you think Reed is going to be there tonight, Lodi? Uh, I don't know, Axford. He said maybe. Your guess is as good as mine. All I hope is that the hornet is there. What do you say, Creevy? Ten o'clock. It's too early. 
I'll give the order. Well, Joe's downstairs with a truck. Wait. Can he wait? We leave for Sneeds when I say so, not before. Mr. Brett, 11 o'clock. Yes, yeah, time for us to start moving, Cato. You understand what you're to do? Yes, sir. We'll use both cars tonight. You'll drive the Black Beauty. I'll take the small sedan. If I'm going to come in at the finish, I can't have Lowry and Axford wondering how I got there. I understand. I'll meet you at the entrance to the alley two blocks south of Sneed's place. Keep the haunted mask and the gun and the Black Beauty with you so I can pick them up. I have them. The gun is loaded? Yes. That's all, Cato. Get going. Take the Black Beauty out of here. I'll meet you in a few minutes. <laughs> Okay, here's the squad car. Pile in. Come on, expert. Move those dogs. We're going to Sneed's place now? Sure. Yeah. I should have the police for us. Step up. That you, Butch? I'll set you up. Three of us can sit up in front here. Yeah. Let's go. We're going to pick up them laces, huh? Get this bus rolling. Sneed's expecting us. Where are we, Mr. Bates? In the alley behind Sneed's house. It's almost midnight. As soon as that truck pulls in here, we have to get busy. Mr. Bates. Yes, I hear it, Kato. A truck. It must be the one we're waiting for. Very soon now. Give me the haunted mask. Put yours on. Yes, sir. And the gun. Here. Yeah. Remember, as soon as we're through here, we race for the Black Beauty fast. I can do the mask and gun, get in the small sedan, and come back here. To make sure the Black Beauty gets away with you in it. I understand. Get back out of sight. The truck has no headlights on it, but it's going to pass right by us. Back. Oh, Claire. Uh, where, where's Sneed? He knows we're due. Who's that? Is that you, Creedy? You fool, turn off that basement light. It's glaring right at us. So what difference? No one suspects that you were here for the smuggled goods, no? Come on, cut the talk and let's get going. Yeah, you amateur crooks give me a pain. If you're talking about me, Shut I... up. This ain't no time for argument. Butch and me will get the stuff out. You stay at the wheel. I, I stay at the wheel? Yeah, them trunks is heavy. I will open the back of the truck. Here, yeah. better take this. A gun. In case there's some trouble. Very well, but there will be no trouble. I shall watch from a little further down the alley. Come on, we gotta grab them trunks and load them in. As the two men worked fast, making a trip for each trunk, Britt Reed and Cato moved closer to Sneed, sticking to the shadows. There. One more. Okay, Sneed. We'll be out of here in a minute. I will watch. Those fools. What reason is there to keep a lookout? There is no one here. I'll take that gun. Who are you? A gun. That mask. I've seen pictures of it. The green hunter. You're going in that truck, Snade. Now what for? Now before your thugs return on that last truck. You cannot do it. I can't. You shoot. Yes, I, I cannot breathe. I... Uh... They are coming. Quick, give me a hand. Into the truck with him. Way back where it can't be seen. Good luck, you know. Hurry, time for us to get out of here. Okay, heave it in. Slam the doors. All through, Sneed. That's the words. Hey, where is Sneed? I don't know. Yeah, he maybe don't like the dog. He's got my gad. I'll go in and hurry. No time. Come on, we got to get this stuff rolling around the front. All set, Miss Creevy. We can get moving. Where's Sneed? Come on, come on. We ain't got no time for saying goodbye. We got the goods. Let's deliver it to your store. But, but he always... He didn't this time. This stuff's hot. Come on. Yeah, step on it. It's 12 o'clock. As soon as we get out of this alley, you better snap on the light so nobody won't suspect nothing. As the huge truck rumbled out from the alley, the squad car carrying Moran with Larry and Axford approached from the main street. No sign of the harness yet. Ali, you think it was a false alarm, Moran? Hey, what's that truck doing coming out of that alley? Whoever it is, Moran, it can't be the Hornet. He uses something a little faster than that. Yeah, you're right. Are you going to look into that truck, Moran? What for? What for? Holy mackerel, you dumb flatfoot. Don't forget what started this whole business. Huh? You're after smugglers as well as the Hornet. That alley is right behind Sneed's place. Sneed? Hey, you're right. Holy cow, step on it. They're going around the car. We'll get them. Hey, pull over there. Get to the curb. Out them in. They won't stop. Swing your wheel and smash into their fingers. Hold on. Here we go. 
Yeah, come on. Go uh, right. Uh, what are you doing? What's the idea of smashing it up? That's far enough. Don't none of you move. What's this? Hey, it's a squad car. We've done nothing wrong. It's Creevy, huh? That's my name. What of it? What have you got in this truck? Oh, yeah. Uh, it ain't nothing. I... I'll tell you, it's late. Holy cow, you're admitting it. You're admitting you smuggled the stuff in with Sneed. I know, Mr. Sneed, but I have nothing to do with smuggling. This charge is ridiculous. These lace goods are for the department store. I'll say this for you, sister. You're a pretty smooth customer. Go ahead, search the truck. You can't prove anything. I think that's a fine idea, Sergeant. Why not do that? Who's that mud? Reed, good gravy. Where did you come from? My sedan, actually. Parked right behind you. I saw the crash and came over. Okay, you. Open up this truck. Hold the flashlight on it, Axford. That's a gun the sergeant's holding. You'd be smarter to do as you're told. Uh... Okay. Those trunks are full of lace, but if you think you can pin anything on us, you're badly mistaken. Help! Let me out! I see. Well, this looks like quite a party. Oh, really? I, I was gassed to harness. Did, did you get the lace? Shut up, you fool! Need the police. Police? Yes, Need. Too bad your eyes were blinded by that flashlight. I am innocent. I, I have nothing to do with this. Nothing to do with what? You can't make any of us talk by these third degree methods. I tell you, those laces are mine by rights, and you can't prove they've been smuggled in. Hey, Reed! Here's one of the uh, handkerchiefs from the trunk. It sure looks like the ones we've seen in Sneed's possession the other day. What of it? Let me see that, Axford. I'd like to... Well, Sergeant Moran, take a look at this. Oh, holy mackerel. It's got Sneed's name written right across the corner. Oh, my name? Yes, right here. But that's impossible. When I brought these handkerchiefs in, there were no names on them at all. And yet, that is my signature from my rubber stamp. You fool. Let me at that rat. No, you don't. You've ruined everything. Take it easy, Miss Creevy. It would have made no difference if Sneed hadn't talked. I know better than that. You'd have been sunk plenty. These signatures were all the proof any court would need. Yes, yes, the signatures. I, I do not understand. Holy glory. What is it? Would you take a sniff of this handkerchief? Hmm. Whoever did it must have used invisible ink for those signatures. Invisible ink? Yes, you can tell by the characteristic odor. This was done with a chemical that doesn't begin to show up until 24 hours after it's applied. Well, what do you know? Invisible ink. Gary, who is it? Come on, Sneed, spin it. There is only one answer for that. It was the man who gassed me. The man who ruined our plans. The Green Hornet. just heard the adventurer, the smuggler, signs his name. These exciting dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit, and are sent to you each Thursday and Saturday at this same time. They are copyrighted features of the Green Hornet Incorporated. The events and characters in tonight's drama are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is the National...